I don't know why I did this. That's a lot of games. I have one week to beat every single mainline Pokemon game. So you're clicking on this video thinking, how is it possible that this man beat every single mainline game in just a week? That means he had to beat 36 games, including all the different versions and third versions of games. Well, to come clean, I didn't. So, how many games did I complete then? 10. 10 mainline Pokemon games in a week. And how do we get to this number? Well, let me tell you. First, I think it's fair to remove the alternate versions. For example, if we complete Pokemon Red, we don't have to complete Pokemon Blue, since they're essentially the same game. Then if we remove the remakes like Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the number shrinks again. And finally, if we remove the third versions like Emerald or Crystal, since they're essentially the same game with one or two minor differences, the number we reach is 9. Essentially, one game from each generation of Pokemon is what what I would have said if I didn't think the sequel games Black and White 2 warranted a playthrough. Changing far more than just adding Ultra Necrozma or Giratina's Distortion World as a change, instead Black and White 2 added three brand new gyms, a completely original story, and so much more, thus bringing the total games to 10. Also, I um, got this idea from Nathaniel Bandy who got it from Yako CMN, so um, hi guys and thank you. I decided to take on this monster challenge live, not only to keep myself in check, but also also for emotional support from the chat. I spent almost every waking hour of my life playing Pokemon this week, which is not actually all that different from a normal week to be honest. The timer doesn't stop when I'm sleeping, the timer doesn't stop when I'm eating, and the timer sure as heck doesn't stop when I'm doing jump rope? What the f***? But before we get started, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, a playthrough of almost any Pokemon game takes at least 30 hours casually, and you would be right. So we thought, let's check out how long each game actually takes on average, according to howlongtobeat.com. On this website, people submit their time for how long it took them to beat a game, whether they played casually, 100%ed the game, or rushed the game. So obviously, we'll be looking at the time rushed, since, well, I should be rushing... Right? First up is Pokemon Red, taking an average of 17 and a half hours rush. This might take longer for me as well since I'm gonna come clean right now, I've never actually played the original Red and Blue. Little did I know the horror that awaited me. Next is Pokemon Silver on average taking 20 hours, and then Pokemon Ruby with an ever increasing number of 25 hours. Yep, on average, people who rush this game spend more than a full day playing it. Okay, well, um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. For the fourth generation, I decided to play Pokemon Platinum instead of Diamond and Pearl because surprisingly it was quicker at a nice 24 instead of 25 hours. Fifth is Pokemon Black taking 19 hours and Black 2 taking 23 and Pokemon Y taking 19 hours and 30 minutes rushed. Pokemon Sun squeaks in just under a day at 23 hours 30. Pokemon Shield surprisingly is then cut all the way down to just 16 and a half hours being the fastest game. And lastly the most recent installment Pokemon Scarlet taking a surprising time of only 19 hours. So how much time would all of that added up even equal? Well, according to this, we have to spend 207 hours. And how many hours is there in seven days? 168. And that's including the time to eat and sleep. See the problem here? The answer to this video's title may seem obvious to you. With all the information so far, if we factor in sleep, there is no way that this should be possible. So all of this was streamed live right here on the channel, and instead of running through these games in order, which I probably should have done, I let the chat decide which order I would tackle the games in. If you haven't been on my channel before, well, hello, first off, but you won't know this, but I actually hate Pokemon Sun and Moon. I have openly bagged these games in so many of my videos, so it was only appropriate for chat to start me off in Alola. Pokemon Sun and Moon are known to have some of the longest intros in the game, and in a challenge where time means everything, I really felt it. After spamming through the opening dialogue and protecting this little ball of gas on a bridge, we finally claim our starter Pokemon after 14 minutes. And this was a big decision, not only in this game, but in every game to be honest. But in this case, I decided to go with my least favorite Poplio. Pokemon Sun is a little bit different to the other Pokemon games. Having no gyms and having you wander around four different islands, defeating trial captains, totem Pokemon, and Kahunas. The early game of Pokemon Sun had you travel around the first island, taking on a normal specialist named Ilma, or also known as Ilma Balls. Got him. But anyway, picking up Poplio, we took in our rival Hal, admittedly not that bad of a rival in my eyes, and made our way through the opening route to the trainer school. We have to beat five trainers here, which chewed up some time. 
but upon reaching the first town, it was time to take on Team Skull, and our first captain, which I lost to. Which didn't feel great, cause you know, I guess it means we're losing time. But beating him on the second attempt, I cleared the rest of the island and made my way to the first Kahuna fight in just under two hours. I'd picked up a few Pokemon along the way, like this little Growlithe, but I wasn't sure if I was actually going to use them. But in this game, the EXP share is giving EXP to all the Pokemon on your team, even if they don't battle. So I thought I might as well get a few Pokemon and level them up as we go. Defeating the Kahuna, we made our way to the next island. The reason I decided to go with Poplio was for the second island. The trials on the island go water, fire, and then grass. And I was banking on the fact that Brion should be able to handle most of it, if not all of it. This was definitely true for the first two as she crushed the wishy-washy and Salazzle, but um, I overestimated her ability. Now, if you didn't notice, there's something I did to save time in not only this game, but every single game going forward, and that was turn off battle animations, overall saving me an ungodly amount of time, I'm sure. But side tangent aside, it was time to tackle the grass trail, and it's here I learnt the fact that no, Brion was not able to do this by herself. Not wanting to waste time to go train, I kept trying to brute force this fight, with the same team trying all kinds of strategies, but attempt after attempt, I kept getting more and more impatient and I couldn't go train now otherwise I should have just gone and done that in the first place so I kept on trying but this damn assist cast form kept coming in setting up the sun so the totem Pokemon Lorantis could just solar blade us with no setup wiping all my Pokemon but for some reason after 30 minutes of attempts it spawned in a Trumbeak instead allowing me to barely take out this thing and complete the island in 4 hours and 40 minutes after spamming my way through a bunch of dialogue now, speedrunners manage to destroy these games in times much faster than I ever will be able to do. I mean, they've done this game in just under 5 hours, a time I was fast approaching. But I have played these games a couple of times, so although my energy had declined ever so slightly, assuming the gaming position, I didn't need to beat those speedrun times. I just had to be decent, and by 7.5 hours I had beaten Island 3. But this game does have an elaborate plot section where you have to go save a friend from their super hot evil mother consuming a full hour of my time and to my surprise actually led to me learning that you can lose this battle against Lusamine and the story will still progress who knew from here we crush island 4 with relative ease although extremely under level a common issue i'd have throughout all of my playthroughs rescuing Lusamine from ultra space and obtaining the legendary pokemon soul kaleo we could make our way to the league now oh that energy would not last past RJ if only you knew the suffering. Having a legendary on the team, however, was going to make this league a piece of cake. Solgaleo basically handled the whole thing, countering pretty much everything but the Dark Specialist, who our Primarina could destroy, leaving just the champion battle. I've never tried to speedrun a game like this, so to do it under 11 hours would be pretty hype, I'm not gonna lie, so let's make it happen. All right. Beating the champion and seeing that congratulation text on screen is great and all, but technically we didn't beat this game in under 11 hours. And do you want to know why? Well, what I'm counting as beating these games is seeing those credits roll. And in this case, they don't roll until we sit through seven more minutes of dialogue, a battle with Tapu Koko, and five more minutes of dialogue. Either way, 11 hours and 7 minutes later, our time in Alola was complete. One down, nine to go. Now although it was 12 o'clock at night, I still had a little bit of energy left in me. So I decided let's at least start the next game, and chat voted for me to take on Pokemon Ruby. A game that I actually fondly remember, unlike this gutter trash, and after taking a very short break to consume sustenance, we were thrusted into the third generation of Pokemon. Now in my mind, I didn't think this game was going to take that long, but since the XP share worked differently in this game, being an item that shared XP to just one Pokemon, the maximum amount of Pokemon I could reasonably train up while skipping as many trainers as possible was about three, instead of a full party. So I decided to pick up Mudkip and reset for a good nature, boosting its special attack. I decided to set the goal to beat the first two gyms before I went to sleep. Making it to the first gym took just over an hour, but we did have a Marsh Trump who counted this rock gym with ease. I picked up a Routes and a Shroomish along the way, beating Brawly with the assistance of Routes, who I decided to switch train. And with that, the first day of the Great Pokemon Marathon had come to a close. Let me just say, I was so excited for today. 
The freedom yesterday brought me from being able to rush through a Pokemon game without having to calculate damage numbers or come up with strategies for each boss was liberating. Every week on this channel I thrust myself into some type of gaming challenge and getting the chance to just sit down and play a Pokemon game with the simple goal to just complete it, it was, well, freeing. Well, that's what I thought when I woke up, but as I walked back into my room and saw that timer ticking down, things changed. My goal today was to finish Pokemon Ruby and at least start the next game, whatever that may be. I got stuck at my rival for a little bit, but it was too early in the marathon to get frustrated. I knew if I did, it would start to affect how I play and I'd begin making silly mistakes. But for now, that didn't happen, defeating him on the next attempt and making it to Gym 3. The next Gym Watson was easy enough since Mudkip evolved into Marshjump, gaining that electric resistance. And so onwards we went to Flannery. That was skippable, I was just riding on the path, so I was thinking, oh, I'll be able to dodge. Now here's the thing, in all these games, there is a balance that must be struck. A balance between leveling up by battling non-required trainers, and sneaking past as many of those fellas as we possibly can. On one hand, I wanted to take down these trainers for XP, so my Pokemon would level up. But on the other hand, if I spend too much time doing so, I'll lose too much time and maybe not finish the marathon. But then, if I don't train them, maybe I'll be underleveled for the gym leader, and then, then I'll have to go train anyway, so then I would have wasted more time. Uh, I don't know what to do. As you see in the Norman fight for Batch 5, my Pokemon are at least 4 to 5 levels below his, and although I managed to squeak through this battle on the second attempt, I knew now on my way to the next gym, I should probably take on a couple of optional battles. Oh, yo, the XP from this is gonna be nuts, by the way. Absolute nuts XP. Bonkers XP incoming, ready? Oh, 90 XP? <laughs> Okay, never mind. I lied. Oh wait, no, there's 720 XP! That's what I was talking about. And before I knew it, I was making my way into Team Magma's base, on pace to beat this game well before the end of the day. And so, I took a little break to go to the gym for an hour. Even though I was eating like shit, at least I managed to squeeze in a few workouts. In retrospect, if I hadn't taken these small breaks to focus on anything else than Pokemon, I don't know if I would have had the mental strength to survive this challenge. After my workout, however, I beat the hideout and got to catching Groudon. The reason I chose Ruby over Sapphire was for this Pokemon specifically. From this point on, Groudon was going to be my sweeper. Come in, set up with bulk up, raising its attack and defense, and then boom, earthquake everything. Well, that's kind of a lie, because the next gym was a water gym, so he couldn't do much there. But as I made my way through Victory Road, totally not getting lost in this huge dark cave, I have no idea if I'm going the right way, by the way. Well, that's not a good sign. If we've already fought someone, that probably means we've done a loop. <laughs> no, man. That's bad. Look at this dude. He can't even make his way through a 20-year-old game. You know these games were made for kids, right? Either way, it was time to begin our next Elite Four journey, which was easy using the Groudon bulk up and earthquake strategy. We blasted through the league in a matter of minutes and took down Steven easily thanks to him specializing in the steel type managing to beat Pokemon Ruby in just under 8 hours. For a game that was meant to take 25 hours, I thought this was great, and so I moved on to Pokemon Shield next. Beginning Pokemon Shield, I picked Sobble, because according to chat, it would be the best, but I'm still not convinced about that. Now, I probably should have spent my time grinding through this game, but instead I decided to do this. You're a bully. You're a bully. You're a thief. You like stealing from your workplace. <laughs> I'm a stealing. Silly, silly RJ. You don't have time for memes. You're gonna regret that later. Unfortunately, this game is pretty long. And although it has the XP share, meaning I can train up a full team of Pokemon, the fights actually seem harder. Partially because I chose to skip so many trainers, but also I think they just had more competent teams. Arriving at our first stadium, I choose the only acceptable number for my uniform. Number 69, of course it is. Ah, a good old sex joke, they never get old. What does get old and fast, however, is this game. I don't know what it is about these Gen 8 games, but something just feels bad about them. Pop our rival is a step down in every way from every other rival, and the gimmick Dynamaxing was just handled so poorly. They're only limited to stadium slash gym battles, and very few Pokemon get access to the Gigantamaxes, which actually make them cool. But then even getting the Gigantamax Pokemon sucks, 
You have to do these stupid max raid dens, and on top of them being pretty rare to spawn, they only spawn in the post game. I mean, come on, what were they thinking? That's just lame. But I committed to this challenge, and I wouldn't let my hate for this game stop me. In fact, it just gave me more of a reason to get through it as fast as I possibly could. Also, if you're enjoying this, please subscribe. I really want to get that silver play button this year, and also, apparently, if I say the word like, the like button will glow down below. So, um, if it does, let me know. Chances are, though, I'll be doing something like this again, so if you don't want to miss me torturing myself for your entertainment, definitely subscribe. The beginning of this run looked like this. And by the end of the day, I was left like this. But where did I get to before the end of the day? Surprisingly, all the way to the Glimwood Tangle, just before Gym 5. But needless to say, I was quite tired by this point. So off I went to sleep. Except it was one of those nights where I just couldn't sleep. Normally when I lay down in bed, it takes me ages to fall asleep anyway, but whenever I know I have to get up at a specific time, I end up just laying there, telling myself over and over, you need to sleep, you need to sleep, you need to sleep right now or else you'll be f***ed up for tomorrow, you idiot, why aren't you asleep yet? Sleep, please sleep, sleep, why aren't I asleep yet? Oh my god. And so what should have been a nice eight hour sleep turned into a measly four hours where I tossed and turned the whole night. Thank God for caffeine, am I right? Alright, let's game. Defeating Jim 5, I get thrown into a battle with Hop. And after beating Jim 6, we instantly battle him again. No! Hop! Leave me alone, you stupid mother... So, uh, can you tell I was getting annoyed with this game? I got Mocha. Coffee equals power. Coffee equals power equals speed equals endurance. The caffeine was definitely pulsing through my veins today. But to be honest, I don't really want to talk all that much about the rest of the game. It dragged on for another five or so hours as we had to stop Chairman Rose from doing whatever the heck is happening here with, may I just add, one of the most boring legendary Pokemon ever. Basically just taking the concept of like Giratina and just making it worse for some reason. I mean, look at me. Do I look entertained? Anyway, I finished Pokemon Shield defeating Leon with a playtime of 10 hours and 20 minutes. Next up was a personal favourite of mine, Pokemon Platinum. My first ever Pokemon generation was Gen 4, specifically Pokemon Diamond, and man I love this generation even with all its flaws, like the minimal fire encounters, random level spikes, and the fact that I still had to use these damn HMs. You'd think that I don't enjoy this game, but I really do. What game you on? This is game 4. We're not doing bad, I don't think. I mean, I really don't know. Like, we have long games left. That's the thing. We have Paldea, which is probably like 15 hours. Black, which I feel like is very long. And then we have X and Y, which is going to be pretty quick. Okay, well, I was right about one of those things. And the other two were swapped, technically. It just goes to show how much I thought I knew about Pokemon and how much I was yet to learn. I decided to pick up Chimchar for this run as it does really well in the early game and late game. And evolving him into Monferno before taking on Rourke, the first gym leader, made this first gym a piece of cake. I'm gonna do an American accent now, fella. This is me if I was living in the Mississippi River. I was going down to the Mississippi River all the time and I was talking like this with my fellas down there. One day I fell in the river and I was like, God damn, my, my leg's wet now. Oh God, watch out! Mississippi River full of, of bats flying around, flying around around me like going crazy, going crazy like. And then I was like, watch out for the bats, they give you tinnitus. Tinnitus don't matter though if you run into Peruglies, and Peruglies, they do be doing the flinch of that though, but Macca Punch takes out a Perugale, and we're moving on in. Terrible southern accent. Ah, uh, it's not actually that bad though, fella. Honestly, I have no idea what was going through my mind right now, but I guess it's a small insight into my mental state. Gen 3 to 6 and all the remakes made in those generations like Pokemon Heart Gold and Omega Ruby have special places in my heart. It was at a time where I had no real life problems, no obligations, and as soon as I got home from school, I got to flip out the DS and just game away. Life was simpler back then before I had this channel and did all these crazy challenge runs, so I'm pretty nostalgic for it. Speaking of when times were simpler, my brain was also simpler and didn't decide to read nor could it figure out where to go after Cynthia gave me this secret potion. I remember always trying to go down this path only for the guy to stop me and say, 
Hey, the lights are out, so you can't go there, resulting in me mindlessly grinding my Torterra all the way to level 100. Assuming eventually just that the lights would come back on, but uh, no. So yeah, six-year-old RJ had a level 100 Torterra before the sixth gym. Kind of a flex in a way. Anyway, after dealing with some Team Galactic stuff, we made it to Snowpoint City and beat the gym and went to go finish off the plot stuff up at the lake. I thought this was a good jumping off point for the next day going into Mount Coronet and the Distortion World. The end of today would mark the halfway point in this challenge, and so far I'd only completed 3 out of the 10 games in the franchise, so if I wanted any chance at getting this done, I'd need to pick up the pace. The goal by the end of today was bare minimum finish this game and move on to the next, but today shocked me if I can be honest. Firstly, I cleared Team Galactic's headquarters, defeating Cyrus in battle. Hello, grunts of the It's RJ channel. Our goal for world domination is getting this video to 1 billion likes and overtaking Baby Shark as the best video on YouTube. Yeah, that guy doesn't look sane. We should definitely listen to him. I then made my way through Mount Coronet and into the Distortion World, which meant I had to take on a few tough fights like the double battle with the Team Galactic admins. But jumping into the nightmare fuel of 8-year-old RJ, we catch Giratina and with it can easily close out the rest of this game. Sunny Shore Gym was easy, and we made it through Victory Road in just 30 minutes. Now if I'm going to be honest, Cynthia did pose a huge problem. If you don't know, the level scaling in the later parts of these games are known to be quite abysmal. Definitely worse in Diamond and Pearl, but still bad in Platinum. So when I made it to Cynthia, my team was hovering around level 50, besides Infernape. But Cynthia's team would be able to deal with Infernape quite easily, which presented a slight challenge. My strategy the first time around was to Carmine with Infernape raising our special attack and defense, meaning all of Spiritomb's attack would do less damage and we should be able to one-shot everything after that. Is that a crit? Ah! Okay, uh, never mind that. Let's try that again. So, I tried to do the same thing on round number two and pray for no crit. Okay, never mind, I guess. So, in theory, I could have kept attempting this strategy and eventually when the crit didn't land, I would be able to do it, but I decided to go for a different strategy on attempt 3. And that was to use Jolteon, who had Charge Beam, to boost our special attack, and since Jolteon already had naturally good special defense, should be able to take a decent amount of hits from Spiritomb, and then we just heal it up like normal. After boosting my attack, we eventually took it out with a Charge Beam, and in came Garchomp, to counter me with its ground type. Of course, why didn't I see this coming? I did have Shadow ball for it, but that did barely any damage, and down went Jolteon. But I decided to push on anyway. Garchomp goes for a big Dragon Rush on Giratina, which I fully expected to take out, but somehow, Giratina hung on with just 3 HP, allowing it to get off its Dragon Claw, severely weakening the Garchomp. This let me switch around the party, cut its attack with Intimidate with Staravia, and revive Giratina to max health. Yes! Let's go, Giratina, kill this thing! Giratina, kill this dumb sand thing! A crit as well! The luck's on my side now, Cynthia! And with Garchomp down, the rest of the fight was easy. And boom! Credits roll at a time of 11 hours and 20 minutes of playtime. Not bad, not bad. This also meant I had more than enough time in my day to get to work on what I thought would be one of the longest games. It was time to take on Pokemon Black. Pokemon Black and White were meant to be reset points for the Pokemon franchise. The only Pokemon accessible pre-post game were all new Gen 5 Pokemon. For some reason, a lot of people had problems with this, and I don't know why. I can't use Lucario, it's my favorite. Pikachu's not even accessible in this. Is this even Pokemon? It was a time when the internet started to openly criticize the new Pokemon designs. And ice cream? How lazy can Game Freak get? But in actuality, this was a point in the franchise which I fondly remember. I never had a problem with any of these designs, and community sentiment has definitely swung the other way in more recent years. It's quite often that I hear Gen 5 games are people's favorite game, and for good reasons. These games are great. So let's get into it. First off, I picked Tepic for my run, who could almost single-handedly deal with this game. Minus the first gym, where I did pick up the free elemental ape to counter the leader. Gym 2 was pretty easy since it was a normal gym, and now that we had Pig Knight, it had access to fighting moves, so we took that down without a problem. But arriving in Castalia City, I decided to finally take a quick break and do important things like 
shower and uh, excrete waste before taking on Gym 3. Beating Gym 3 after just 3 hours including a 30 minute break was surprising. If we kept this pace, it was roughly a gym an hour, but what shocked me even more was how fast the next badges rolled in. Just 30 minutes later I had beat gym 4, and 40 minutes after dealing with all of the team plasma drama in the freezer, gym 5 was defeated, but then, as expected, things slowed down for a bit. As getting to the next gym took more than just a trip over a bridge. Instead, I had to make it through multiple long areas, specifically two routes, a cave, and then a tower. But once doing so, we still managed to clear Skylar, the gym leader, in just over an hour. Gym 7 then took me 30 minutes or so to get to and beat, and with the in-game time sitting at just 6 and a half hours with 7 badges claimed, I was dumbfounded. I could have sworn this game was longer. But, of course, if you've played these games before, you would know there is a lot of Team Plasma plot stuff coming up. But then, surprisingly, even that went past quite quickly, which led me to defeating Jim 8 by just 7 hours of in-game time. To be honest, I couldn't believe it. A game I thought was going to take forever, somehow I was going to be in under the double digits. So even though it was very late at night, I kept pushing. All that was standing in my way now was the League and Getsis, which Embor obliterated without any trouble whatsoever. I can't believe it. We beat this game in just eight and a half hours, and thus the Great Hope arc began. I felt confident. Once more I thought I was capable of anything. All I need to do is do the same thing again in all the other games and I'll be able to get a good amount of sleep each night. Real test. I'm trying to miss my calls. I just want to go back to sleep. Why Pokemon? Why? Good morning chat. How are we? Pokemon Scarlet. Man, screw this game! Now you might be thinking, RJ, this is gonna be easy. Beating the champion is going to take barely any time at all since you can pretty much just run from gym to gym. Mm -hmm. Wrong. In the ninth generation of Pokemon, they decided to switch up the formula. Not only do we have eight gym battles, but we also have to take on five team star bases and five Titan Pokemon, which essentially means there is 18 gyms. Not only that though, we have to take on Namona a bunch of times and then fight Penny and then Arvin and Clavel at the end of their stories and then to make things worse the intro of this game just drags on and on for a whole damn hour before I can even head to any main battles. And don't get me started on the Penny cutscene. They have that cutscene drags on for 15 scene, freaking minutes. I, oh, I get it! All my complaints aside, we did manage to complete all the main battles and defeat Gita after just 10 hours. And that included me taking a break to go to the gym, but as you know, beating Gita does not mean the credits roll. Not even close. First, we had to go and take on Professor Clavel and Penny at the academy watching that god-awful cutscene. Arvin was my next opponent, and after dealing with him, we moved on to Nimona. And although the rest of the game posed little to no issue, this fight with Nimona was a damn struggle. Nimona isn't even the final boss, and yet I did get stuck here for more than 30 minutes failing to beat her multiple times with a few different strategies. I haven't talked much about my team in this generation because for the most part, they're quite boring. But what we did have generally did not match up well against her team. Frustrated with my constant losing, I had two options. Go train and attempt it again, or maybe get a good night's rest and hopefully I'd be able to beat it tomorrow. And so I thought to myself, I beat Platinum and Black yesterday. I'm sure I'll have enough time to not finish Scarlet today. I could go to sleep, right? Okay, so things aren't looking good. Just two days remain and we have five games to complete. If I even wanted a chance at completing this, I needed to finish bare minimum Scarlet, another game, and at least get halfway through a third game. Good morning, Nimona. I've had my rest now. I believe I will be able to destroy you. So in my battle against Nimona, I ended up setting Sword Stance with Heracross, raising its attack by six stages and healing it whenever it got low. Then a Brick Break was able to knock out every 
single one of her Pokemon. Yeah, it was that simple. I don't know what I was doing yesterday. From here, we went down into Area Zero, taking 30 minutes just to descend this place to finally take on AI Sada. If I could manage to defeat her, it meant seeing those credits roll. And so, after doing so once with my normal Pokemon and then defeating her again with our Coridon, we beat the game in just over 12 hours. Oh, look at those sweet, sweet credits. And with that, I had completed six out of the 10 games. Let's get on to game seven. It was time to head into the game that started it all, Pokemon Red. And to be honest, I really didn't know what to expect. And that's because I had never completed this game before. Barely able to see what was happening on screen and with the way stats and moves are set up in this game, things would not have gone as well as they did with without the chat. So, if you're in the chat during the lives, I thank you so, so, so much. My mental sanity thanks you. In the original Pokemon games, there is only five stats. HP, Attack, Defense, Special, and Speed combining both special attack and special defense into a single attribute. And also, on top of that, the higher your speed stat is, the more likely you are to land a critical hit. Things I did not know before this stream. On top of that, all moves of a certain type are the same damage type. And it was like this up until Generation 3. For example, all water moves are special, all ground types were physical, and so on. To make it clear if it's not, Surf and Waterfall are both special moves, which is just weird and really makes me appreciate these newer games. The plan was simple, or so I was told. Picking Bulbasaur would allow me to deal with Brock and Misty, and I was to pick up a Nidoran male to solo the rest of the game. The reason to pick up Nidoran was because it evolves into Nidorina really early, and then we can pick up a Moonstone in Mount Moon to instantly evolve it into Nidoking. Nidoking has great coverage in this game, getting access to Surf, Thunderbolt, and Thrash, all of which did so much damage. After playing through this game, collecting all the badges and fighting the league, I was more frustrated than I had ever been playing Pokemon. The way this game is set up with how unclear and obscure the routing and puzzles are in this game, I cannot fathom how Gen 1ers love this game over everything else that came after it. I mean, take the HM acquisition of Surf and Strength. If I didn't have a guide up or chat for this, I would have been beating my head against a damn brick before the end of the day. But there was light at the end of this dark, dark tunnel known as Pokemon Red. And that was that it only took me 5 hours and 50 minutes to beat meaning I could hop into Gen 2 straight away and hopefully beat it before the end of the day. Damn, Game Freak was given a moment to cook with these ones. The addition of color and the way even the world is just set out is so much better. Experiencing this step up in quality between just Generation 1 and this, I'm astounded that those Gen 1ers even exist. The only thing that really sucks in this generation is the starters. I mean, what are these guys? So I picked up the only acceptable starter, Totodile, who I plan to beat the whole game with. Over leveling Totodile, I beat the first gym and evolved it into Croconaw. The unfortunate thing about Croconaw is that it's a physical attacker. And since all water moves are special in this game, it means we are doing suboptimal damage. Of course, Whitney gave me trouble, as she is known to do, defeating me multiple times before finally taking her down after two and a half hours. After Croconaw evolved, however, things really picked up, and after gaining access to Surf, we were able to take down the other gyms all without too much of an issue. I picked up Ice Punch from the department store before taking on the final gym, which made dealing with Claire's Dragon Pokemon super easy. Now, all I had to do was beat the league. If I manage to finish this game today, I will have finished three games in a single day. But, absolutely exhausted, I was unable to make this a reality. Deciding to get some rest before a big final 30 hour push tomorrow. <laughs> Waking earlier in the morning, I had 28 hours to finish three games. So technically, it's not day seven yet, but it's close enough, and so the grind began. My first goal was to beat Pokemon Silver. With an overleveled for Alligator, we managed to swiftly make our way through Victory Road and take on the league. And in just one hour, we had beaten Pokemon Silver in seven hours and 42 minutes of game time. But we still had two games to go, Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon Y, my two favorite Pokemon games. Yeah. 
I saved the best for last. I began with Pokemon Y, the game that began the gimmick trend that would span every game from it up until the present, and arguably the best one, Mega Evolution. It takes all those Pokemon you love, revs them up to 11, and enhances their stats or even changes their abilities. Pokemon like Lucario, Blaziken, Charizard, and Tyranitar all got Mega Evolutions, making these awesome Pokemon somehow look even cooler. When this game released, it got criticized for being too easy, being too similar to past releases, and overall lacking in content. But most importantly, apparently Pokemon was copying Dragon Ball Transformation. Although I do agree with it lacking in content, for the most part, this game had great features like the aforementioned Mega Evolutions. Plus, I enjoyed the new and returning collection of Pokemon. The story was also good in my opinion, although the character development could have been done a little better. Either way, if this game is as easy as everyone says it is, I shouldn't have a problem completing it in barely any time. For this run, I decided to pick up Charmander and Froakie, which I named Frogscribe because, well, you should totally Frogscribe, especially if you've made it this far into the video. But as the clock ticked down to just 24 hours remaining, I had barely made any progress. All I'd done was beat the first gym, and at this point, it dawned on me. If I was going to complete this, I wasn't going to be able to get any sleep between now and finishing both games. And even then, we were going to cut this very close. So after finally beating the second gym by the end of the hour, I tried to pick up the pace and get my Mega Bracelet. Once I had it, I'd be able to Mega Revolve my Pokemon and in theory blitz through the rest of the game. However, getting a hold of it proved more difficult than expected. Firstly, I had to cross through two routes, and upon arrival in the town, I had to face off against my rival. We did almost lose here, which would have taken up even more time, and just as I thought I was about to get my bracelet, no. First, we have to go beat the gym leader. Only problem was, I rushed to get here, meaning my Pokemon were underleveled, and I could barely defeat the four trainers before the gym leader, having to go heal after each one. My first attempt against Corina did not go so well. I lost because of her Horlucha, which grossly outleveled, outspeeded, and outdamaged all of my Pokemon. But on attempt two, Frogscribe was able to outspeed it with a little bit of training and finish the job with a Water Pulse. This meant I could acquire my favorite Pokemon Lucario and its Mega Evolution, which I would repeatedly use throughout the rest of the game. Thankfully, the next route I could all but skip using the Skiddo Riding Trick, saving me so much time. Granted, it costed me a lot of XP, which might have helped me in the gym by getting Charizard to evolve. Even without it though, in just over an hour, we'd beaten the next gym. Halfway through Pokemon Y, it was now that I had the idea. The idea to do something so crazy, something so stupid, no one would believe what I did. Just um, pause playing Pokemon Y for now and jump into Black 2 instead. Well, I guess it's not that crazy after all. I thought a switch up would do me good, considering if I got far enough, I'd be able to calculate how much longer it would take to beat each game. And if it looked achievable, maybe I could get just a couple of hours of Shut-Eye. The region of Unova has changed much since we last visited it over 60 hours ago. It really doesn't feel like that long ago, but yeah, it was. With starting in a brand new town with a brand new rival, my personal favorite by the way, with a great backstory and personality. Knowing well that Tepic could handle this game, I had no time to mess around and see if any of the other starters could conquer Unova. So I picked up Tepic again, and I managed to clear the first gym leader, Cheren, who was actually a rival in the first game in just over 30 minutes. And just 10 minutes later, I had made it to the next gym. Pokemon B. O. K. E. M. O. N. Pokemon! I love this gym so much, it's so good. Roxy is a poison specialist, which does resist Pig Knight's fighting moves, but even so, the flame charges went hard, especially against her half-bug, half-poison, Whirlipede. Just 20 minutes later, I had Badge 2. This was looking good. My chat had told me that Black and White 2 was going to be way worse, but so far, this was great. Pokestar Studios, are you kidding me? Okay, well, there goes half an hour. Continuing from here, we managed to defeat Gym 3, but the tiredness was already setting in, and I still had 20 hours left. Nonetheless, in just two and a half hours, I had beaten five gyms. That's right, two and a half hours to beat five gyms. That's impressive, right? The big difference between the sequel games is now we must attend the Pokemon World Tournament, and then stop Team Plasma on their boat. 
and trust me, we are going to be exploring this boat a few more times yet. This time I had to defeat a boatload of Team Plasma Grunts. Get it? A boatload on a boat? <laughs> Okay. Doing so meant continuing our badge quest, and with just 17 hours remaining, I claimed my sixth badge. Now, what if I told you after Gym 6, I caught not one, but two legendary Pokemon? Yep, I caught both Cabalion and Verizium Plus Unlimited Mobile Plan before even taking on Gym 7. Cabalion did take up a little bit of time, having to reset multiple times before finally capturing it but I think it's worth it. Verizon, on the other hand, gave me no issue at all, staying in the very first ball I threw. I don't know why though. And with these two legendaries and their insane stats, we were able to defeat the Dragon Gym and Water Gym in just an hour and a half, meaning we had every single gym badge in just six hours of playtime. But now it was time to put an end to Team Plasma's scheme. So back to the ship we went, battling a boatload of plasma grunts. Get it? Boatload on the boat. Oh, I already made that joke. Okay then. Well, this time around, we were looking for a password here. And in doing so, it was chewing up so much time, leading to a fight with an admin before the boat flew away. Yeah, this uh, boat actually just gets up out of the water and flies away. Pretty sure boats aren't supposed to do that. Chasing after the ship and having made great great progress, I thought at most, the rest of this game would take maybe 2 hours max, and we were halfway through Pokemon Y, so surely I could have a little nap, right? And one power nap later, we were back at it. From this point, I had just over 10 hours left. I managed to beat Kurum in a single blow and take out Getsis within 25 minutes of waking up. The journey through Victory Road this time round is a lot longer, however. But within an hour of waking up, I was at the league. Nothing here gave me too much trouble. With the legendaries on side, and especially since Cabalion knew Sword Stance, I could just set up and roll everything with either Iron Head or Sacred Sword. This eventually helped me defeat Iris and see those sweet, sweet credits roll. And so back to Pokemon Y we went, on minimal sleep, slightly delusional, and with no plan. But to go, 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 go. Eight and a half hours to beat the rest of Pokemon Y. Surely we could do it. Let the countdown begin. Fifth gym badge acquired. That's the sixth. Seventh. Now we had to take on all these Team Flare Grunts. Time to save the world! Boo hoo Lysander! And that is Gym 8 defeated! Give me that badge! Whee! Goodbye Callum! And with just 3 hours remaining I had made it to the league. If I could beat these Elite Four members and the champion, I would complete my challenge. After 165 hours with two and a half hours to spare, we have made it to the final champion. You know, we gotta get serious. The one week Pokemon Marathon, we are taking on Champion Diantha. All right, Horlucha down. Who's in next? Surf takes out Tyrantrum. Let's go. Oblivion Wing does the job. Oh, it lands the Thunder and we got paralyzed. You're kidding. You're kidding. Mega Lucario, let's freaking go! Ah, oh, it's perfect, it's still perfect. Let's just go for the water pulse. Hopefully we get a confusion. Confusion would be massive. If not, I don't know what the hell. Oh, we had speed, water, water pulse, confuse. We land the confusion, let's go! It hits itself, let's freaking go! Come on! Sir, come on! Big damage, big damage. It hits itself again, let's freaking go! Surf! Oh, it four restores and snaps out of confusion. Okay, well that's not optimal. Okay, water pulse, confuse again, please. Yes! 
The next confusion! Oh, it, it did. It, okay, well, it took us out. We are a dark type, but that's okay. We're in blaze territory. Our ability activates. We deal bonus damage with fire moves. And down goes Gardevoir. And let the credits... God damn it, who is this guy? AZ wants to battle? Oh my god. Okay, fine. And with AZ defeated, finally we see those sweet, sweet credits roll. And boom! Challenge complete. So, was it worth it? Sacrificing a week of my life, my sleep, and my mental sanity all to play Pokemon? Well... I don't know, to be honest. At some points, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed interacting with all of you in the chat. I enjoyed playing through some of the early games, like Ruby and Platinum. But then when we were playing Pokemon Red, I wanted nothing more but for this challenge to end. The final day was sure as heck tough, getting only two hours of sleep. But I'd recommend everyone play all of these games. Maybe not in a week straight. And, and definitely get a good amount of sleep and do other things. But... I love this franchise. I love all the memories I have with all of these games. And I love the community around them. So if you're a part of the streams, you're hanging out with me every single day, thank you. And if you've watched this far into the video, I appreciate it. And in saying that, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section if I should do this with all the side games or alternatively, maybe with a different franchise. And maybe if this video does extremely well, I will do every single version of every single game in a month. I feel like that could be really fun. But most importantly, here's how long it took me to beat every single game. Okay, that's it for me. I'm going to go to sleep. Good night. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe, like, bye-bye. Ah. I'm still here.